difficult being a director in front of 600 actors. Not intimidating, not at all. Thank you, UBCP, for the honor of presenting the Lorena Gale Award, named after a fine actor who lived fiercely and with great dignity. I was very lucky to have uh, worked with her on Living Out Loud. And uh, so this award means uh, something special to me as well. And like so many others, I consider jo Joy Coghill to be the most valued mentor and advisor when it comes to being an artist and a member of our community. Beyond uh, that, she's a dear heart to me, a close friend, a soulmate. And as all of you know, those of us who live the life of mounting plays or movies or artistic pre presentations of any kind, we meet a lot of people on our journey, hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands. We come together and we share our innermost feelings and discover facets of our nature that we may have not shared with our closest friends and family. And then sort of like a gestalt group, it brings out the best and the worst of us, and then suddenly the project's finished and we break off and go our separate ways. Those who remain in our lives as true friends, soulmates, confidants, actually relatively few. But she remains connected to so many. You might say she's sort of our Mahadeva, our mother of excellence and compassion. She keeps tracks of all of her colleagues with great affection and interest. She continues to be a strong force in so many lives. She certainly is in mine. In fact, she married myself and my husband five years ago, well, underneath the big tree in our backyard. <laughs> our lives crossed when I was directing a drama for CBC in 1982. Big break for me, it was a one hour drama. And I was casting a change of heart with sessions in Toronto and Winnipeg and Edmonton and Calgary. And my casting director, Gail Carr, said, there's this wonderful woman out in Vancouver, we should go and uh, audition. And there's, and there's a young actor too to play the teenager. I think he's got a lot of talent. He was a, a young teenager, uh, Ian Tracy. <laughs> and, uh, and Joy Coghill, you gotta see this woman, Joy Coghill. Well, I'd never met Joy before. She hadn't done much film work, but Gail had this feeling. It was for the role of Edna, a middle-aged farm woman who was in a terrible mess, uh, marriage. And the scene was of her confronting her husband after 30 years of marriage. Now, I have in my career watched probably 30,000 auditions, I figure. But I can say for certainty that no audition moved me the way that joy moved me that day. And thank goodness I'd already read several other women for this part and had worked on the script with Sharon Reese. So I had a pretty good grasp of the story because Joy came in the room in the way that she does with the part memorized backwards. She had a list of questions for me that challenged me to the core. <laughs> well, she was curious and she had a process. And then she sat there thinking and I thought, oh my God, I haven't made myself very clear. And then she gave a nod to the reader and it was basically a four page monologue. It was brilliantly written, but it was only a gate through which Joy then took me. Without a flicker of falseness, she burrowed right into the soul of this Edna, revealing more complexities and humanity than I could ever imagine. I was absolutely transfixed, I was thrilled. I learned more in those four minutes about what a master actor can do, that what is not on the page or in the direction, and it was a turning point for me. Basically, I learned that when you work with greatness, you just clear the path, make it safe, and then get out of the way. Needless to say, we did a new pass on the script and the whole project was lifted by her insights. Sadly, gone are the days when auditions were 20 minutes to half an hour long, <laughs> where our directors and actors got to work together and figure out how we might work together and share our ideas. The last film Joy and I did was called Betrayed. 
and she did a death scene. And I can tell you that our discussions went well beyond the set and into the unknown. Of course, she'd been close to death more than once and found it kind of fascinating. She always finds a way to see her roles from the inside out. She's also a great teacher. Canada's community of actors and actresses is seeded with those who have learned from her, from the days of holiday theater, some from the days when she was artistic director at the Playhouse Theater or the National School of Theater. Her resume is long in film and in television. It reached back to the 70s with titles such as Jacob Tutu in the Hooded Fang, <laughs> The Red Surge in the mid-90s, My Life as a Dog, The Sleep Room, which we did together in Montreal, and Da Vinci's Inquest. Her list of awards is very impressive, but what's not on the list is the role she continues to play with hundreds of directors and writers and actors, dancers, technicians, musicians, producers, designers, and so on, who continue to look up at her. At more than 90 years of age, rarely a day goes by when someone does not contact her for advice or encouragement. To choose the life an artist is not easy, but Joy listens and she understands. She's lived such a full life, raised a family, and remained passionate about her art. Her counsel is always solid, practical, and highly valued. Most recently, I mesmerized as she orated the story of Unless the Eye Catch Fire for CBC. It was accompanied by a, a piano playing, plucking the strings with the top up. It was absolute magic. You can actually still hear it on the CBC website. I think she did that at about the age of 89. Joy is a model for all of us who look to aging as a time of accomplishment. Her energy challenges people half of her age. In the past 15 years, she's been busier than ever with her most ambitious project so far, which is PAL. The Performing, the performing Arts Lodge now boasts 111 suites and a 100-seat theater in the heart of the city. She remains committed to ensuring that those in the performing arts who need support have a home and a community to support them. With her co-founder, Jane Heyman, she has spirited this housing project through difficult times and continues to be its guiding force. Joy Coghill Thorne has dedicated herself to the culture of Canada and British Columbia and after more than 60 years of devotion, hard work, and a multitude of stunning performances, she is so deserving of this award. She worries about us. She works for us. She loves those who give from within, who make this place on the planet a more distinctive and wondrous place by sharing your talent. And we thank her. I have the great privilege of inviting her on stage now to join us to receive the Lorena Gale Award. <laughs>